I'll just take about 15, 20 minutes, give an introductory talk on children. It's Children's Day, and I'm the chief child. And before God, I'm a little child. But before Satan, I'm not a child. I'm an elder, yeah. valiant, general, dangerous, terrible, without mercy. But before God, I'm a little child. Amen? Amen. But before you, depending on who you are, I'm a adult child. I'm a granddad. I'm a great granddad. Or I'm between great granddaddy and I'm not even a very small child. No, I'm not a small child to any of you people. I'm between a great grandchild to a, and an adult child. Amen? <coughs> Praise God. In that Psalm 127, our brother read, he says, Except the Lord build the house, the labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord watches over the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrow. For so he giveth his beloved sleep. Lo, children are the heritage of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is his reward. So we said the heritage is an inheritance, a landmark, a historical site. Something passed from generation to generation, preserved. That preserves sites. Like you have United Nations, um, what do they call them? Um, that you mustn't destroy them. What do you call those centers in different countries? UN um, is heritage site or something else. What do they call it? World eh? World heritage sites. So it says children <clears throat> are heritage. So they are very valuable possessions. I thank God for that word. It says I've given you peace because everywhere people see message. Trouble, trouble, trouble. He said, but you have given you peace. Amen. And your lineage peace. So no matter what happens, for you, your loved ones, your children, they'll be perfectly safe. Perfectly safe. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So they said children are seeds of continuity. In Mark 4, it calls about the seed. And so we found that there is nothing wrong with the seed is the soil that something is wrong with, which is the influence and the process by which the seed develops. So there is no bad child. You see those guys, you see smoking dope, smoking in their hem. They were never born bad. In James chapter 1, James chapter 1, I read verse 17. We said children are gifts, right? They're gifts from God. They're reward from God. In verse 17, it says, every good gift, every perfect gift is from above. They come down from the Father of light. It's God that breathes them into the womb. So they are good gifts and they are perfect gifts. And they come from the Father of light with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. So what do we have? Bad parenting. No bad child. So when a child misbehaves, we have bad parents. So actually, if they come to meet you that your child is misbehaving, you shouldn't protect, say, no, no, you should investigate and correct it quickly. The Bible says, otherwise, that man will eat the bread of sorrow. That's what the Bible says, that person will end up eating the bread of sorrow. Like Brahm said, he said, if they come to report to you and you push it off first, second, third, nobody's going to tell you anything again. Even if they want the child going into the valley of death, they say, leave him. The parents, I don't want stress. So, you must understand some policies. One, there is no bad child. Every child is a gift, is perfect and good. What we have are bad parenting. Number two, and this is very important because if we say that the child is not bad, it's the parents that is bad. And the parents at one time will send the child to school and the teacher will correct send the child to crash and the um, nanny will correct. Leave the child with the nanny, nanny will correct. Then it means you still be responsible for what they impart into your child. 
and you bear the consequences. If it is good, you enjoy the reward. If it's bad, you, be, you face the consequences. So you must have at the back of your mind that you can't raise your child all by yourself. There are inputs from other people. You cannot raise any child by yourself. Though you cannot raise any child by yourself, if they raise your child wrongly, you get punished for it. <laughs> Doesn't sound fair, right? <laughs> I sent my child to a sister and she complains, your child was stealing meat in the pot and, I'm, and I have to cane him and your child is crying. You cane my child? How dare you? I was told of um, a former president of this country sent two of his children, a daughter, no, it was just a daughter, to um, a woman, somebody I know, she's like a mother to me, sent the daughter to go and do holiday, summer. <laughs> they didn't send the child abroad. He's a former president, he's still one of the richest former presidents in Nigeria, one of the richest. So he sent his daughter to go and do holiday in the house of this person She's late now, but when she was alive, she was like a mother to me. She said to me, Pastor, 6 a.m., the former first lady calls me and says, Shorty G. Ah. She told her, I said, she's in my house doing holiday. Why are you calling me at 6 as she woken up? Leave her. He said, no. Has she taken up the broom to sweep? No wonder. All the negative things about this former president, I've not heard one talk about his children negative, not one. Not one, no scandal, nothing. He said, my bum or Jeff for me, don't spoil her for me. See, she must be up with the broom sweeping the house. He said, the maid said, don't give the broom to the maid it's when my daughter is with you. Kai, a president of Nigeria. Did you hear me? Some of you, <laughs> you've not even heard it. <laughs> a sub, mini sub parasita. They give you a child bruise. Hey, heaven, the whole sky will break down. Say, give her the broom, let her sweep. Say, did she wash the dishes before she went to bed? He said, I can accidentally call it in because he just, he said, he said, please, you are disturbing my house. Leave me alone. He said, no, I'm not disturbing you. Did she wash dishes before going to bed? Said she washed dishes. She kept asking, said, please leave me alone. Let me have peace. Why is she like that? Because if they spoil her and her life is ruined, she will be caned by God, not the woman she went to spend holiday with. Did you hear me? So she has to get involved. So when they bring a report, don't dismiss it. Investigate it. Doesn't matter. Investigate it. And by now you should know your child. Whether they lie or not. You know, lying is natural. Every child comes with some form of rebellion. For a child to lie. Do you need to teach a little child to lie? No. Who put this phone here? Is it you? No, man. And he's the one that put it. You know, when you come with pressure and noise and everywhere steaming like smoking like a dragon, that child will tell you I did I mean, I didn't touch it. You don't teach children to lie. They will lie naturally. But you teach them to tell the truth. They don't know how to tell the truth. But they know how to lie. Without anybody teaching them. So. Also, you must understand, never see your child as a boy or a girl. Never see your child as a boy or a girl. Even God said in John 16, he says, John 16, uh, 16 from verse 21, he said, a woman in sorrow, he said, because her hour is come and she enters into labor, he said, but she soon forget the sorrow because what? A man child! God never called boy. You are the one calling boy. That's a wrong thing to call your child. He said, because a man child is born. John 16, 21. Bring it up. He said, John 16, I want to say it. Never! They are not boys. They are not girls. They are nations. They are entities. They are men. 
man child. God calls a born little baby man child. A woman, when she's in travail, has sorrow because her hour has come. But as soon as she delivers of a child, she remembers no more anguish for joy that a man. Let's call them the way God calls them. A man is born. You see men as ah, a polymeter. It's big. Now Tommy is big. Everything is big. And he's praying. Ah, a polymeter. Yeah. Spray like this, spray, spray, spray. I said, so why is that when you give women money, they smile? He said, but pastor, he said, but they smile when you give them money. He said, the only thing is that for men, the money is small. A woman, once you give her money, she smile. But if a man, maybe he has needs, and the wife is saying that food has finished, and they need 10,000, if you give him 5,000, he said, bless you, pastor. He said, you give it to her, he said, we'll smile. He <laughs> said, men smile with proportion. Women smile, women smile with just money. I said, you're correct, too. Very correct. So their nations, their destinies, their hopes of generations, never call them boy or girl. We said as parents, we're stewards of God's heritage and we're responsible for their upbringing. Our fellowshipping with the children, you must understand, varies depending on their age group. That's why, you know, I was with another former president. <laughs> and he was talking. Ah, I have to be careful how I put this. So I don't want, to, I don't want it to affect, I don't know who's watching, I don't want it to affect institutions of over 3,000 years. You know, and he said, I was in the house of this leader, and in their country, it's forbidden to beat a child. You can go to prison for beating a child. You can go to prison. He says forbidden is against the law. He said, and I was with this leader, this world leader, and I were discussing, and I said, you brought up your children so well. They're, very responsible. He said, oh. He said, I didn't spare the rod. He said, eh? He said, don't you know what the Bible says? Spare the rod, spoil the child. I said, but in your country, if you beat them, you go to prison. He said, I beat them in the closet. He said, but that's the Lord. He said, that's for you. For me, I use the Bible to train my children. He said, so I came them in the room. He said, there are rooms you lock up. I still see the man on, he's still on TV up to now, you know, CNN. I still see him. I say, so, Baba, you know I'm wearing a bike. <laughs> and there was a time I was with him, that same person called him, you know, and they were having a chat, you know. He said, I, he said, I, I speak them if they're wrong. Bible says the road of correction is wisdom for children. You can't say you can't beat the child. He said, the time comes, you cannot beat them again. He said, at the time they must be beaten, they are beaten. Then the time, you can't, you can't have a child of 20, 21, now you say you want to use cane. No. He said, but if you miss that one at that time, he said, their wisdom they will not attain to again. And I look at those children right now. Oh, man. The children, too, are world acclaimed. The whole world knows them. So I won't mention the name, I won't mention the country, so you know who I'm talking about. So, when they're zero to four years, you are just a caretaker. Who is the caretaker? Cleaning nappy. I was telling um, our sister has the, um, okay, they say the men, are, boys are men, man. I've not found the word for the woman, but it says are women. So I called, I had, uh, that has the woman just recently gave birth to a woman. And I was telling her that, you know, right now, say she sleeps a lot. I said, that's their job now, to sleep and eat. I said, in three months, they will add play. And they start with like, chicka, 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 chicka. Then they smile. I said, they are growing. That's how they understand life. And so you must understand, as a caretaker, how they understand life is that you are to care. And there are little instructions. So what it means is that 
If they break a glass, say, why did you break the glass? Don't you know? The skeptical stage is not much of an instruction stage. Because at that time, they can't understand. But from 4 to 14, you change from just being a parent to an instructor. You know who instructors are? I have two coaches for my lawn tennis. I play lawn tennis. So I have two coaches. I have a sparring partner coach. That one drills me. I play. Bah, 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 bah. I think we have seen me play with one of them before. We were playing a match. Then I have an instructor coach. So when I hit the ball, take four steps to the left. Now. No, 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 no. That was three. Go back. Start again. I said, oh, please, coach. I said, no, 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 no. Don't sit when you are tired. Take a glass of water. Return back. I said, yes, sir. Now move right. Go. That's how he does. Oh, Jesus. Ah, he said, I didn't see last week. I said, I can't come last week. With the way you drill me. <laughs> um, I didn't see you. I was to come on Thursday. What happened? He said, coach, I'm sorry. I couldn't make this. <laughs> ah, this instruction is too much now. Yeah, I beg. This one, I'm not playing Roland Garros or Wimbledon. If I play Wimbledon, and there's $5 million, dollars, ah, I'll go back there. <laughs> this one is just to keep fit. I beg, leave me, Jerry. Praise God. So... <laughs> So you're an instructor. No, don't do this. Put it like this. No, no. Go and turn it back. You should know by now. They're supposed to face front. You know, like those, you know, most of those are mothers here. Hey, sit right. Ah, come, move, Jesus. You know, it's the dads. Why are they crying? Say, don't let them take ice cream. No, they took ice cream yesterday. They must let it not every day. Amen. You know how the mothers are? They are the instructor stage. Most of this instructor stage is done by the mothers while the fathers consolidate it. Meaning, the fathers come, well, I heard you did this and this in so and so's house. And then he just talks and cautions and advises and he goes. So the mother say, what did I tell you when you wake up in the morning? Who woke up here and didn't turn, didn't put the bedsheet right? Uh, yeah, yeah, today come back here. No, oh, mommy, yeah, yeah, I don't hear. You, you get it. That's the stage. 4 to 11. Then 11 to 16, you're a coach. That's my, the second coach, the one you saw me with. You know, that one is more gentle. No, 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 no. He said you moved too much to the front. That's why you couldn't get to the ball. Now, I told you, don't go too much to the front. Always hit the ball to the back. Push your, push your opponent to the back. He can't give you too much to the corner. So keep pushing him to the back. He said, coach. That one in that uh, canton, that one is not a coach. That one is an instructor. Now, um, okay, Pascal, no, 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 I don't say walk back. Say, skip, you are, the ball is coming over your head. You can't walk. Oh, yeah, run back. No, 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 go back, go back, go back. I'm panting. I say, okay, now, because you'll be panting in the game, so you have to go. Now, go, now, two, one, two, two, two. Oh, Jesus Christ. So I'm not seeing for two, see you. You will see for what? <laughs> But this other coach, he is not an instructor. He guides, which is what you do when they're 11 to 16. No, 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 no. You see, you couldn't meet that ball. Do you know why? I told you not to move to the front. Now move back. Now hit it. Did you get it now? Very good. So avoid moving to the front. I said there's a drop shot. Say, thank you, coach. So we are coaches, 11 to 16. And then 16 to 20, you are their friend. You are their friend. You can't use cane, though. You can't use cane. So you are their friend. And so what happened today? I saw that guy talking to you. What was he saying? Mommy, I don't know, Jerry. He just said that I look beautiful. Ah! He said, you look beautiful. Hey! He said, I'm going to meet the person. So, no, mommy, oh, you spoil things. <laughs> you know how some of you can be, right? So these children, are <laughs> you have to know which face in life. It's a lot of work to raise children. The Bible says, a mother entered the hallmark of God's faith in Hebrews 11 by raising a child. By raising a child. You know? And you must understand that there are different kinds of parents. You have the domineering parents, very controlling, no opposing views. Here, they never apologize when they're wrong. Who oh, put on this TV? Did I not want you to put on this? Shut up! Go and kneel down! Daddy, it was when you touched the remote. Oh, when I touched the remote. Uh, okay, uh, it doesn't matter. <laughs> that person, oh, I'm so sorry. I forgot. I thought it was you. Okay, stand up. Sorry. So come on, hug daddy. 
you know. Hey, hey, even if I touch the remote to call, hey, hey, is that why you should sit and be watching it? Did I not say nobody should put on TV? Very domineering. Those ones don't raise children well. Here, many times the children are frustrated. They raise frustrated children. Then you have passive parents. This abdicate their rules. Husband abdicates to wife. Wife abdicates to, to husband. Wife, and then both abdicates to the maid. Mommy, I, I, I couldn't tie this knot. Call Cecilia. Cecilia! Come, come, go, John. Help you tie the knot. <laughs> These are passive parents. You should not just tie the knot. Say, come, sit. Let me show you how to tie it. All right. Because you are watching a series of drama. And you have heard that the woman now has been caught. And you want to find out what that man will do. And because you don't want to miss that series, when you say, I can't tie the knot, and if I don't tie it, they'll beat me in school. Cecilia, what's wrong with you? Ah, uh -huh. take, yeah, follow her. Go and help, help him to tie the knot. Uh -huh. Can you mind? Hey, you my wallace, you're my, you're my catch. Whoa. Those are passive parents. Those ones <coughs> raise insecure children. Children that are very insecure, low self-esteem. Rather, you, okay, sit down, let me show you how to tie it. Okay, can you tie it now? You didn't get it. Don't worry, okay, I'll tie it for you. Don't rush. We'll be doing it every day till you get it, okay? And you'll get it one day. Trust me. This was raised very confident children. You get it? And then you have dishonest parents that don't fulfill promises. So the children are used to unfulfilling promises. And we say, don't make promises you don't intend to fulfill. And I also say, don't make threats you don't intend to carry out. Um, you are driving to Lagos, but on the expressway. If you jump up again, I will drop you on the express. But you can't drop him on the express. You can't do it. So, and he jumps up, then you park. When I get down, get back inside. <laughs> Then you start driving. Why did you make such a threat? After a while, don't jump. If you jump, I'll deal with you. He will jump because he knows they are what? Empty threats. So he's used to disobeying instructions. Dishonest parents. You have different types. Yelling, exploding parents, threatening, busy parents. Busy, so busy that they don't have time for the children. Because of time, we can't go through so many of it. <clears throat> and of course, you have wise parents that stamp the life of the children with positive words and attitude and positive habits. They are more concerned with values and attitudes rather than performances. So if the child doesn't make an A, they don't turn the house into um, what do you call bomb, um, explosive sites. Now they reprimand the child, but still tell the child, I'm proud of you. You've done appreciably well, but I know you should do better. I'm not happy with this. I'm not happy with this. Do you want me to get you a lesson teacher in this? What's the problem you have here? OK, why, why is your English not good? You speak one of the best English I've seen everywhere. That child can't be demoralized. So why didn't you pass well? You're supposed to have an A. And the guy gives an excuse. Do I get you an English teacher? So you do better? All right, what I want to do it's shown that in your this and this, you didn't do too well. I need you to be reading more, more of your books. It's, you know, I just, instead of two hours of movies, you're going to watch your movie for just one hour, 15 minutes, you're going to read for 45 minutes. Don't say, you will not watch movie again. No more. That's, that's, it's part of their bringing to watch those things. You get it? Like a child using Lego. No more Lego in this house. No, it's part of their development to play with Lego. But then what you could do, you cut down on Lego time and allow them to spend more time in the areas they need to improve on. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you should arrange tours, recreation for your children. You should constantly check on their value system. You should discover open doors in their lives, find their areas of strength, and find what they're good at doing. Find their passion and see how you can channel it and encourage them to be positive. You should protect 
and provide for the family, 1 Timothy 5, 8. You'll be an active listener to the children. Amen? Amen? Always treat them right in the presence of other children without compromising, without any compromise. So if the other children say, uh, Tommy, uh, Tommy, Tommy is a foolish boy. I've never, don't say he's not a foolish boy. I've never known you to be foolish. What did you do? What did you just say? I don't know you to be foolish. I know you are wise. So what did you do? He's not a foolish boy. They won't report to you again. Ah, the guy will shout on us. Let's leave it. So he's a foolish boy. Ooh. I know you to be wise, smart, and intelligent. So what did you do that calling you such a name? Do you get it? My child is not foolish. Did you hear me? Yes, sir. The freeze are on the way. Wow. You've not helped the child. You've not helped the child. Okay? So you address that to make sure that your child doesn't end the last word saying she's foolish. The last word she hears is that she's wise, she's intelligent, but then what did you do that they had to call you such a name? I want to know. Do you get it? So in the presence of other people, Address the issues without making them feel any less in value or in virtue, okay? And husband and wife, always be in harmony over your children, whether you are right or wrong. You have to be in harmony. My wife is wrong, and I wish she's wrong. I'll say so. They know me. I'm, if they matter the case, I say, until mommy changes, there's nothing we can do. So you can't whine me for anything she says. I cannot go and meet her. Ah, ah, ah. The GOC, the powers that be, are a temper just meant with mercy, a joke. <laughs> but there is nothing you bring to me. No, I side with her 24 7. Nothing. But, Daddy, I want you to see, Mom is wrong here. I'm not sure. I can't. I'm sorry. I don't agree with you. I don't. I don't. Okay. This, 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 I'll find a way to bring good and argue and argue. But I'll now quickly go to her. These children are getting wise. I'll address this to Otherwise, they'll prove you wrong. <laughs> Amen. But you would, God would. I like the passage, all our children shall be taught of the Lord. Meaning, we can't do it all. We can't do it all. There are cases you yourself will ask yourself, ah, oh Lord, I thank God for this child. Because if it's to say I raised a child, I can't say I really, really raised this child with the time that I had to go out to market, come back at night, and then when did I really have the time? I just thank God. So God will help you. Amen. His grace will work for you. Amen. Amen. And they will turn out better than your expectations Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So you do your best and you must understand as parents, you also need to be taught. You also, if some of you don't know some of these basic things, so avail yourself for knowledge to learn on parenting. Okay? So that it can help you guide them properly. Especially use right words over them. Right words over them. And God will help you. But know of a shorty that except the Lord build, there is nothing you do. Shout and everything. It's still in vain. So as you build, God will build with you. Amen. And your labor will never be in vain. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And like we prayed for them my goodness, the world is yet to see what is coming. Is it not from here that we have one that went to Commonwealth, another one won the world, the world the, uh, something, 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 and some of them said they even saw themselves that the moves on its uh, competition on all sorts. They are going out and they'll be great. You say, what about protect? God will keep them. Anywhere they go, God will protect them. He will preserve them in the mighty name of Jesus. So my final prayer for you in the name of Jesus. Your joy over there will be full. It will never, ever, ever be turned to sorrow. They will make you proud. They will bring joy and gladness into your life. In the name of Jesus. Above all, they will end better than you end. They will end well. They will end with God. They will end with glory. In, they will end with honor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. 
in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Amen.